these big three and they're ancient, right? They get, they're in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the early church, um, you know, and I, it's sort of like, um, sorry. No. <laughs> Are we okay? Is that a child? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents, and with me today is Dr. Andrew Swafford. He is a professor, he's a father and a husband, and he's also contributed to a few Ascension projects, including the Romans Study Program. He's provided commentary for the Great Adventure Bible, as well as the newest resource you've contributed to, What We Believe, which goes into the Catholic Church, why do we have a church, what does it mean to be Catholic, and I would love to riff on one of the later portions of the book where you talk about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving as something we do, we should be doing all year round, not just in Lent. I feel like we hear about it in Lent, but we, the rest of the year we're like, yeah, I probably should, but nah, <laughs> yeah, can't be bothered. That'd be chocolate, right? Give up chocolate. So these things are ancient. In my own story, I mean, what kind of clicked for me moving from life of an athlete, finding my meaning, my worth there is like, well, how do I become a spiritual athlete? How do I kind of devote that kind of blood, sweat, and tears here? And you know, one of the things I like to reflect on in um, St. John, his first letter, you know, why do we sin? He speaks of the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And uh, the lust of the eyes, that, that, that's greed. That's I see and I want. And you think about how fasting, prayer, and almsgiving ties up with those directly, right? Lust of the flesh, curbed by fasting. Lust of the eyes, curbed by almsgiving. Pride of life, curbed by prayer, right? So these things, uh, the answer, the human dilemma, the human dysfunction, and even, and you can see these in lots of ways. Like think about Genesis 3. Eve sees the fruit was good for food, lust of the flesh. Delight to the eyes, lust of the eyes. Desirable to make one wise without God. That's the part of life. And think about our Lord's temptations, right? Make these stones into bread, lust of the flesh. Uh, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world, right? So it's pleasure, possessions, and then throw yourself down. Show off who you are, the vainglory, right? So uh, pleasure, possessions, pride. That's why we sin. Prayer, fast, and almsgiving is like an antidote that kind of targets the heart of um, this predicament. And so it's, it's, yeah, Lent there, emphasized, but they're really something we need all year round. Did I mention he's a professor? I want to sit in on his classes. So how though? So I get it. And, and how do we move deeper beyond just rote prayer? Like I realize I should pray, but there's so many obstacles, my own inertia, the things I got to get done in a day. So how, like, let's say I recognize I'm, I'm not doing well on any of those. How do I get started. Like, how, how would you say like, whether you're a college student, whether you're in the working world, how do you get into first gear? Yeah, you're speaking my language. This is for all of us. Right? Start slow, start small, be consistent. I think that's number one. It's kind of like exercise. Like find something that works, <laughs> stick with it. It doesn't do any good to have grandiose goals and then to not be able to do them for more than a week. So start small, little victories, build that snowball one, one thing at a time. So with prayer, what would you recommend? Again, it's like exercise, find what works, stick with it. But I, I really, really, I mean, there's so many great things in our tradition. There's so many wonderful ways and nothing is like the mass, that's the prayer of Christ, uh, things like the rosary. But one thing that's been extremely powerful for me uh, and people that I've worked with over the years and my family is just that kind of quiet mental prayer where you listen. And, and if you haven't done this, just start with five minutes where you just listen to the Lord. And, and maybe, you, maybe it's before the Blessed Sacrament. Maybe it's with the scriptures at home, but don't just make it a study session. Hear the Lord's voice for you today. Lord, what in my life needs to change? How are you calling me to grow? Uh, what, am I, what are you calling me to remove from my life? When you ask those, those questions and you sit and you listen, and it, it won't always be riveting, but start with five minutes, maybe work it up to 10, 15, 20. I mean, it, 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 again, at first it's like, oh my gosh, I can't sit still that long. But if you, if you do that, it will change your life. Uh, it's been said you can't persist in that kind of prayer and serious sin because the silence is just too loud. You'll either stop praying or stop sinning, but you can't do both for very long. And I just know when I've prayed like that consistently, it, it, I, you know, in terms of me, um, my heart beating with the, the pulse of the Holy Spirit and having kind of a confidence and a peace that I'm, I'm where he wants me to be and even giving me the strength to do things I never would think I could do on my own, uh, it's just been, it's so transformative. And again, it's not always, it's not magic, it's not always riveting, but it's sort of like sitting in the sun, like you sit in our Lord's presence and you listen and you'll start taking on his complexion. You'll take on his mind, his heart, whereas as beautiful as so many of our devotions are, and I would never discourage anybody from rosary, divine mercy chaplet, but that vocal prayer, sometimes that can drown out 
that silent knock on our heart where the Lord might be prodding us, prompting us, get rid of this, do this, more of that. You need to talk to this person. Don't be afraid of this. Some of that only really emerges in my experience with that kind of quiet prayer. Yeah, amen. And so fasting is um, it's, it, it's an ancient practice across different religions. Yeah. And it's great that the modern world has rediscovered fasting and the health benefits. Intermittent fasting, right? <laughs> yeah, which I'm doing right now, miserably. Um, but fasting... He as, looks great, though, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, it's throughout Scripture. It's throughout Scripture. It's like uh, Old Testament to New. Fasting is a part of what God is calling us to, to enjoy the good things of the earth, but also to, to not be controlled by them. And so fasting allows us to step back from our, our earthly hungers and get us back in touch with the heavenly hunger. Like, I ache for you, Lord. I ache for bread and for water and carbs, beautiful carbs. But I ache for the Lord above all. Right. And fasting as something that I am doing, not just for fitness or nutrition, but... That's called dieting. Yeah, but for the Lord. Um, and so rediscovering that and purposely fasting. Maybe, again, there's health benefits to this, which are great. But I'm doing this for the Lord. So when I experience hunger, help me to remember you, Lord. And maybe not just from food, maybe from media, mm. maybe from, and, and in the book you talk about this too, from our favorite TV show or, or Netflix show, fasting from the radio or music. I did that for a Lent, kicking and screaming, like no music in the car. In the car. And um, that's, it's not that these things are bad. No, no, that's the thing. You're not fasting yeah. from bad things. Right. Uh, you're fasting from the good things so that we can reorder ourselves. And so the things of the earth, we possess them, they don't possess us. Yeah. And it makes room for God. I mean, think about our Lord saying, do you, you know, hunger and thirst for righteousness? That, to kind of think sacramentally, like my desire for food, for water, that really is a sign of my deeper hunger for our Lord. Even fasting from, you say like, having the humility to get all the sleep one needs in order to live well and with charity, if we're tempted by productivity and busyness and we value ourselves on like getting, like hustling and getting as much done as we can, it's an act of, of letting go and fasting. It's like, Lord, I will sleep. I will let that go until tomorrow and trust in you. Father Mike has an amazing video on sleep, why we avoid sleep out of control and fasting is like, Lord, I give it all to you. You're in control. Help me to get back in touch with that. Totally. You know, we, we both have young kids still. And, you know, so it's one thing to be that, that parent who's up for young, with young kids and losing sleep for that reason. But it's another thing to kind of be the hero late at night because I just need to get more and more and more and more, and more done. And... You know, we all know it's going to catch up with us eventually. And there is kind of a, there is a humble aspect of, you know, this is a good day's work. I'm going to, I'm going to play the long game um, and recognize what I can do and what I can't do and accept that. And there are seasons. There are seasons where you've got to pull the late nights and, right, right. and uh, all-nighters maybe. But almsgiving as this last thing that should be, we, we lean into all year. Why is that important? And beyond just like, oh, the church wants my money, I think we can take a cynical view of it yeah. when, again, there's a deep biblical tradition of I give my goods back to the Lord. I mean, let's face it. If, if, if there were no poverty at all, if, the, if every apostolate had every single thing it needed, we would still need to tithe. We would still need to give alms, not because God needs it, but because we need to detach ourselves from our addiction to stuff and the security that it it brings and so I mean it's not that the Lord needs this money it's we need to rip it from our hearts mm -hmm. we it, 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 and we need to think of ourselves as creatures that everything we have is gift our Lord our God is gift our triune God Father, Son, Holy Spirit is just a pure gift and creation is a pure gift our lives are pure gift we're not owners but stewards of our lives and so we, we need to kind of take that to heart seriously for our own detachment and we need to recognize that that mercy I mean, this is one of the things we, we put this in the book this way. I mean, mercy is love's response to suffering. And there's a deep, deep, deep biblical tradition of alms. I mean, there's some passages that will shock you. I mean, I, I just name one, but this is not isolated. Like Proverbs 19, 17, where he who, lends to the, he who uh, gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. It's almost like what, what the text is saying, and there's a, a deep Jewish and biblical tradition that sees it this way, that when I give alms, I'm lending to the Lord and God by his mercy, by his coming down to us, not because he needs it, he's sort of placing himself in debt to me because of that and will repay me 
in an eschatological way with everlasting life. And it's not, again, this isn't a mechanical thing. This isn't like a contractual trade-off. Not at all. It's God as Father. Just like I would give an allowance to my kids to help mature them and to kind of uh, you know, encourage them to be selfless lovers. Our Lord does that too. And, and, and if you want to know, like, how was Christianity so earth shaking early on. I mean, it, it, how was it such a force for social change? They took these things seriously. They took those very passages seriously. Uh, and we kind of need to reclaim this. I mean, the early Christians, it sounds cliche, they'll know us by our love, but it was true. Like they, the Jews and the Christians had a deep, deep tradition of almsgiving and people recognized it. Like that ain't like the normal run of things. Like there's something different about that. Do people see that difference in us? And we all have to kind of discern our means, our gifts, our abilities, um, but to live a life of generosity, to where appropriate, live simply so that others can simply live. I mean, this is who we are. Amen. What we believe, the beauty of the Catholic faith, available from Ascension. Dr. Andrew Swafford, thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things from all of us at Ascension. God bless. God bless. You were great. God bless. You were magical. That's my line, but whatever. <laughs> Oh, should I answer that? <laughs>